thank God for all that he's doing. And anytime I have to speak, <laughs> no matter where I am, it's an humbling time. I, I don't take it for granted um, because people belong to God and we don't want to say anything or do anything that's not God, you understand? So we thank God and Brother Murrow, I thank God for you, sir, and Sister Barbara and everyone here at the camp. We thank God for you. We're going to go into the word of the Lord this morning and I believe I'm to share a word that God gave us simply entitled renounce. Hmm. There are things we do have to renounce, reject. And so I'm going to begin. I'm going to open up in prayer again and then we'll go further. Father, we thank you. We praise you for allowing us once again to be here. Now, Father, we ask that you have your way. Lord, let me only say what you want said. Lord God, we thank you and we praise you for liberty in the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father, for the blood of Jesus. All that you have done and that you will do today, that your perfect, complete, and whole will be done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to thank God for those that are on Zoom today. And uh, we pray the Lord will minister to you. The word renounce means to disown, disclaim to reject, refuse, or acknowledge as belonging to. It means to deny, disclaim, and to forsake. After repentance, we must go a step further to renounce things as an act of our will to further validate the fact that one has made up their mind to come out or to come clean, to walk free from negativity. For example, one must choose to walk in what is positive or that that produces life. So 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 1 and 2 says, Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. So once true repentance has taken place in our lives, we must then go on to renounce the hidden things that would keep us from our potential. And there are many things that can keep us when we're not honest, when we're not open. Amen. We all want to look good in front of people, right? Yeah, we want to put on our best face, all this and that. But how many of you know sometimes the Lord, you know, he'll say, wait a minute, now just be real. It's better to be real than to be fake. Come on. All right. Hallelujah. Fasting and prayer will reveal things in our heart that we may have forgotten. When the enemy attempts to speak what is not true, you must renounce his word and choose to walk in the truth or the light of his word. As believers, it is our responsibility to act on the word of God. We must stand up and not allow the enemy to wreak havoc in our lives by accepting what is false, negative, or does not produce life. One of the things I... I have to say I don't like his negative words and negative people because that could really change your atmosphere. So we have to make sure that, you know, in our atmospheres that we're not allowing the enemy to speak things. And then, you know, you can hear it. And if you don't renounce it, you don't say, wait a minute. No, it could grab you. And uh, I've had family members like that around uh, when people are sick, for example. You don't want people around them that's going to show up all the gloom and doom. Come on. Amen. It may be true what may have been said, but that doesn't mean you have to create a negative atmosphere. Amen. So I've had loved ones sick and I have been careful not to have people in their midst that will draw them down, that will pull them out, that will drain their spirit. No, you step out until you can get a better attitude. 
Amen. I don't want people around me negative, especially if I'm going through something, Brother Merle. If, 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 you know, if, if I can touch and agree with you, that's going to help you better. Not to, well, brother, you know, it don't look too good for you. Come on now. Huh? That ain't doing you no good. And even if that's the truth, you don't need to hear that. Come on. Amen. There's something you can say. Amen. According to Philippians 4 and 8, what's true? What's right? What's just? Amen. What will build you up? Amen. Not tear you down. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I've been in the midst of people going home to be with the Lord, but you don't have to be negative. Okay. Hallelujah. You can still speak God's word. Come on. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. Somebody with me out there? Come on here. Amen. Speak life, no matter what, down to the last. Okay. And I've seen people take off and go home, and the atmosphere was one of joy. The Bible said, blessed in the sight of the Lord is the death of one of his. So why are we sad? When you know someone is going, come on, and it is their time. Come on now. I think we feel more sorry for ourselves than them because they, they done made it. I, I heard sister say about her husband, you know, what, what are you going to do when you get to heaven? And he said, I'm going to look, look for Jesus, and I'm going to sit at his feet. And she said, uh, I think family members said, well, uh, wonder if he got big feet. Oh, I wonder if he got big feet. Ain't that a good thought? Well, Lord, do you have big feet? What kind of feet you got? What size you wear? Okay. Uh, Y'all don't think about stuff like that? Y'all looking funny. Come on here. I think all kind of little stuff when I get to heaven, what I'm going to do. Walk down the streets of gold. Look up Paul. Come on now. Amen. Ask him some tough questions. Man, how did you go through the stuff that you went through? Y'all don't think about nothing like that? I do. Come on. We have so much to look forward to. Amen. So we don't have to be sad. We don't have to be gloomy. Come on. All right, let me go. As believers, it is our responsibility, to, again, to act on God's word. Amen. We have things that the world does not have, and that's life. Amen. We have life because of Jesus, and we need to share his life. We need to let his light shine in us so the world can see Jesus glorify the Father which is in heaven. All right. Do not allow the enemy to keep you bogged down with the past. Many times people's lives are bogged down with stuff that doesn't happen 20 years ago, 30 years ago, and seem you can't get through it. I just can't break through. No, the Lord wants us free. Do you hear what I'm saying to you today? He does not want you bogged down one more day with that foolishness. Come on here. Amen. He whom the sun sets free is free indeed. And when he frees you, he removes the chains. He takes all those weights. Come on now. He takes them. He throws them away so we don't have to carry it anymore. Be determined to move forward. Okay. As you have renounced the negative, embrace what God has for you right now. You must continue on to perfection, and perfection is to be completed, matured, brought up, made whole, okay? Now listen, the Lord says this to us. The Lord would say the time has come to push past the things that has held you down. It is time to move forward. Stop looking behind at all that has kept you from your potential. When things from the past come to your mind, take these thoughts into captivity. Understand that your thoughts can determine your state of mind. Bring down every imagination and high thing that would exalt itself against the knowledge of Christ. The Lord says, I have come to bring freedom to your mind. Set your affections on things above and not on things of the earth. I will help you when your thoughts try to put you in a low place. Give them to me. I stand ready to help you in trouble, says the Lord. I am a present help in trouble. 
Roll your works on me, for I will see you through this time. Maybe someone is going through a tunnel and it looked like you ain't going to get through it. But when God say he will do, he's going to do something. Guess what's this? He will do it because he's faithful. And he didn't bring you this far to leave you now. <laughs> Amen. Call on me and know that I am God. As you give these things to me, you will find that your load will be light. You will carry only what I've called you to carry, and you will be able to function and be effective in my kingdom. So lay down your cares at my feet, for I do care for you, says the Lord. Now, I have a couple scriptures, Philippians 3, 13 through 15, and 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 through 6. Philippians 3. 13 through 15, it says this. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. When you can forget, and I mean really forget, it will leave you. Did y'all hear what I said? When you can forget, that thing will leave you. And if it is brought back, you the, the, the tentacles of it no longer has its grip on you, so you can no longer identify with that thing when it's really gone. I was sharing this morning with someone about when I first came here, and I cannot identify anymore, Sister Jean, with the exact experience because it's gone. It is really gone gone and you know when the Lord brings deliverance and healing in your life amen you may have a little bit of thought but it, that thought you can't identify with it anymore and that's what God does for us when he heals us when he frees us when he brings us through the victory because he wants us to go on to the next how many of you really want to go to the next amen so we have to keep pressing and we must keep going okay all right so Paul said this I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore as many as be perfect be thus minded. And if in anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. So if a little bit of negativity try to come back, doubt, unbelief, wavering, the Lord going to say, wait a minute, well, yesterday you said you believed me. Yesterday you was taking me at my word. What happened? Come on. We all sometimes have to be reminded of what God have done for us, but what he will yet do for us. Okay. So 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 6 says, For though we walk in the flesh, and we know we're in the flesh, but we don't have to use that, though, as an excuse. You know how some people do? Well, I'm human. Okay, well, you, you just gave yourself an out. Come on. Though we walk in the flesh, guess what? We don't war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare, come on, are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations. Our thinking has to change. Our behaviors have to change. Our attitude has to change. Everything about us, the Lord will change it. Okay, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. If it don't come under that, throw it out. Simple. Throw it away. And having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. So the Lord would say this, renounce all lies of the enemy. Do not entertain negative thoughts. Put the word before your eyes. Watch the Lord come through for you. And remember, he's a present help in trouble. So I'm going to give you a few things that you must renounce. Renounce the fact of resisting the truth. You know how sometimes we can be presented with the truth, but then not really accept it, and it's good for us? When I'm corrected, for example, I could say, uh, now, who Brother Colonel think he is telling me? Now, Brother Colonel didn't do that. But if he did correct me, it's for my good. 
Hmm? Now, how many of us resist that? Okay. Renounce negative confessions. Renounce false words, word curses, lies, and fear, according to 2 Timothy 1 and 7. And finally, doubt and unbelief. Worry, anxiety, and stress. These things that come to us, find out why you're worrying, if that's the case. If you find that you're in anxiety, find out why and get rid of it. You don't have to have it, okay? Fear of failure. Sometimes we don't step out because, well, boo-boo don't like me. Boo-boo don't really know you anyway. Come on. Amen. Don't be afraid of boo-boo, baby, or may-may. I like them. I take them to church every time I go to church, you know. Amen. All right. Amen. When I get to heaven, I, I'm going to look baby up. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah. Rejection. Now, rejection comes in all forms. Some rejection is good. I won't go into that tonight. Amen. Today. Fear of illness and chronic illnesses. Now, you know, I've seen things in my family, and, and one time the enemy told me, well, you know, you're going to have a you're going to have that issue your mother had. I said, no, I'm not going to have that issue that mother had. Well, you're going to have that issue that your auntie had. No, I'm not going to have that issue uh, that auntie had. Well, you're going to do. No, I'm not going to go that way. Come on. No. And I really had to talk to myself. Now, I'm, I'm telling you all the truth. Glory to God. But I said, no. The Bible says, uh, 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 Lord, you promised me healing. You promised me health. Your word is not a liar. You don't lie. Come on here, somebody. And so I believe everything that's in the book, Brother Merle, from Genesis to Revelation and everywhere in between. Come on, somebody. So I take this seriously because it's my roadmap. Amen. So I read it, I meditate on it, study it, and I know that it is true. Glory to God. And it'll also help you. Uh, dealing with everyday issues. There's just so much. There is answers for everything in God's word, uh, 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 Crystal. And I'm learning that little scriptures that I didn't know about. I said, well, I didn't know that, that you know, uh, this and that. I'm going to have to write some of them down because they blow me away, you know, when you need answers. And and uh, Angie's good at that. She's good at, at, at pulling stuff out. I said, where'd she get that from? And how'd she know that? And how? can she explain that so good the Lord said because she reads it and and, and it, you know she said it's gospel she said that today I said oh well if I take the gospel I don't have to make take the ibuprofen or I can put the uh, uh, you know what I'm saying and I don't take ibuprofen but I'm just saying uh, if I go to this first first line of defense you know I, I think brother mentioned that in something and he said he he went to the Lord first and when we go to God first, Brother Merle, I think he will tell us what to do. And if he gives us directions that we may not, we may not agree with it, but if he said it, he's going to make sure that what he wants done will be done in your life. Do y'all understand what I'm saying? So God won't lead you wrong. We must get to know him. We must get to know him for real now. You see all the things that's going on? Do, do, do we really understand that, yeah, we know in end times and all that. But listen, Jesus is in charge. He has the reins. He calls the shots. And we have to trust him. All right. Let me, let me go further here. We also need to renounce condemnation. Romans 8 and 1 says, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So condemnation means to declare one guilty or to put one down or to put to shame. Whenever you feel that shame, well, where it coming from? It ain't coming from God. Even if you did something wrong, come on. You realize you did it, you repent, and then you feel the shame and all that stuff. That's what happened to Adam and Eve. They got offended at God, but they did wrong. But the guilt came as a result of sin, and the enemy put them in that plot. But they opened the door to it. So when we open the door to things, then we got to change again. Come on. Recognize, wait a minute now, I'm not going to go that way. Amen. Because of the blood of Jesus. Okay. 
All right. To renounce again means to disown, to reject and refuse. We must begin to stand up and renounce the enemy. Renounce those things that have kept you in jail too long. Renounce and say, wait a minute now, I'm coming out of there and I'm not going back. All right. When you choose to follow after the Lord, he not only cleanses, but he also renews us to walk in newness of life. So 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. To be in Christ means one lives, moves, and has their being in the Lord. The life we are to live should be hid in Christ and God. So Colossians 3 and 3, it says it. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. Thank you, Father. So listen. Let's be determined today to come out from condemnation of the past. Renounce past failures, miss opportunities. Stop letting this stuff beat you up. Procrastination, disobedience, rebellion and anger, bitterness and hatred, resentment, unwise choices, and rejection. Do not beat yourself up one more day. Leave all self-condemnation because of the choices you've made. The Lord says, leave your past behind. Do not allow the enemy to torture you one more day because of your past or decisions that you've made. The Lord has and will continue to prove himself faithful on your behalf. Keep your head up and move as I've directed, the Lord says. Walk in complete forgiveness because God is faithful. Okay? Now I'm going to give you some words that you need to renounce as well. And they're attack, attack, attached to curses. Um, first of all, let me give you some things that can activate a curse. For example, sin in your life. Rebellion and disobedience. Bloodline generational curses. Now these things, we have the authority to take authority over. Just because there may have been, I'll just use alcohol in my family line, don't mean that I have to be an alcoholic or my generations following me. No, it comes a point where we have to recognize things, break those curses. They don't have to keep going. Partial disobedience, which partial disobedience, really, uh, partial obedience is disobedience. You either obey or you don't. And you know all this little stuff trying to come at me in the atmosphere to tangle up my words? I bind the devil now in Jesus' name. I'm going to speak every word that God wants me to speak. So those of you sitting up in here and throwing stuff, you better watch it because it's coming back at you 100-fold in Jesus' name. Glory to God. I'm here to do God's will, and I'm going to do what God say, and I'm going to speak what he tells me to speak in the name of Jesus. So I take authority over all that foolishness in Jesus' name. Clap them hands and praise the Lord, everybody in here. You know, I'm quiet, Jean. But don't mess with me in the spirit. Because God's given me a boldness and I have a right to stand in. Come on here. Everyone in here. When we come stand behind this desk, it's sacred. Come on. And it ain't no joke. It takes a lot to get up here, up here. Come on here. But we do it because the Lord told us to do it. Amen. Because if I'd had my way, I would be quiet, sitting on the thing, clapping my hands, supporting somebody else, but he the one told us to get up here. So come on here and praise him one more time. All right. What activates a curse? Bad or unsound counsel. Be careful of the counsel you get. Because not everything you hear is from God. And somebody could tell you something, they might mean well, but if it ain't from God, it could lead you somewhere. 
idolatry and idol worship, compromise, deception and believing a lie, rejection of God's word, backsliding, acceptance of a curse. In other words, hearing something that somebody's saying and, and it's wrong, but you accept it. You're taking it in. And the enemy can take that and use it. He's looking for doors. He's always looking for ways in our life. But we have to make sure we keep him out. All right. Broken vows and pledges. Rebel and, and pledges to God, okay? Rebellion to authority. Don't rebel. That's one thing. <laughs> Get rid of that. Okay. You know, I, I, I had a, a Sunday school teacher that told me, sis, when I was about 10, 11, she said, as long as you live, there's going to be someone that you're going to have to come under authority to answer. There are rules. If you rent a house, you get a, a what? You get a contract, and that person will tell you you can do this, you can't do that, you can't have pets. Isn't those rules? And if we sign the contract, then guess what? We have to abide by it, right? You can't get in there and just say, well, I'm going to have me a dog. What the least say no. Hmm? I'm going to sneak my cat in. No. What you mean sneak your cat in? So everywhere we go, right, we got to answer to somebody. Everywhere we go. You can own your own property. Well, the town has rules. The community you're in, y'all won't talk to me. I know it's okay. Huh? If you're in a gated community, they got rules. You can't have a pool. What you mean? I can't. This is my property. You can't have a pool in this one. No, you got to go build somewhere else. There are always going to be rules and things that we have to abide by. And so we have to make sure that we don't get out of joint. Our nose don't get crazy. Come on. Even as saints, come on. Amen. Well, bless God, the Lord understand. No, he don't. He don't ex you put God in it. And then he said, what you put me in it? And then you get in trouble and you want God to get you out of it. Come on here. Amen. He ain't going to get us out of that. Come on. Okay. Don't rebel to authority. Okay. Occult dabbling. Stay out of that. All right. Secrets. Be careful. Secret societies, all this stuff. Okay. Hardening. To the voice of, of the Lord, don't be hard. Let's be pliable. Okay? Proverbs 6 and 2 says, Thou art snared with the words of thy mouth. Thou art taken with the words of thy mouth. We want to deactivate a curse. How do we deactivate? When you deactivate something, it don't work no more. Right? Uh, you, you go to the ATM to put money out, and they done deactivated your card. Guess what? <clears throat> you didn't get no money. Okay, so what deactivates a curse? Full obedience to God. Full obedience. A life of repentance and confession. Renunciation. Deliverance. Application of the word of God. Sound counsel. Prayer and fasting. The whole armor of God. I think God gives us an armor to help us, to both protect us and also to defend. God is the one that will help us, okay? Truth and transparency. Live a life of truth and transparency. You know, where I think a window that's transparent, you can see through it. Clear. That's how we're to live. Being filled with the Holy Spirit. Living a holy lifestyle. Strong in the word of God. The wisdom of God. Using the name of Jesus. Applying the blood of Jesus. Applying the word of God. And knowledge of the root causes so that those things can be dismantled. There's some things that happen in our lives. When we get to the root of it, we can get it out. It's not enough always to just treat symptoms that's like a temporary fix but god wants us whole w-h-o-l-e all the way whole 
So breaking curses and uh, walking in the blessing of God, to break curses and to begin to walk in the blessing of God, this is what we must do. Confess and repent to Jesus. Confront the things that may be bothering you. Command the enemy associated with the curse to leave at once. Clean out any cursed objects or things may be in your home even. Maybe on your phone. Watch out now. Hmm? Your device, computer. You got to keep all that stuff clean. You do know those, those are doorways. When you're looking at things you shouldn't, watching things you shouldn't, come on. Sometimes, uh, I don't really want to say this, but I'll say it anyway. How attached are you to your phone? Can you put it down, turn it off? Oh, it got quiet there. Hmm? It's quiet, Jane. You know, sometimes these internets need to go down. You know, we need to know how to pick up the Bible, get the Strongs. Mm -hmm, but we depend on the phone too much. But one of the things, and I study a lot with all my, especially my Bible, I'm not picking on anybody, but everywhere I go now, and I noticed it even, I think, yesterday, folk go out to eat and see a couple. They ain't talking to each other. Got their phone out. And, and I, I, Jean, I'm going to say this right here. <laughs> this thought came to me, right? I'm going to say this. Now, look, Lord. You know, when, when, when you bring man of God to me, I, he going to put that phone down. I ain't waiting all this time to go out and eat and he on his phone. I said it, right? I said it. Y'all hear what I said? What kind of communication is that? I know, I know, brother, I'm picking, but it's true. We're too attached to these devices. Okay, let let that let that set. Yeah, we're too attached, and then you've got to an answer for everything. And Google ain't your answer. Facebook is not your answer. YouTube is not your answer. You better know Jesus for yourself. Come on here. Amen. We got to know God. But we know everything that's going on on the internet. I didn't mean to do this, but I'm going to say it anyway. Get delivered from the internet. Come on here. I know we'd manifest. If your phone went down and you missed your phone right now, you're going to go into what they call withdrawals. I've seen it happen because I had to repent myself. Come on here. Well, Lord, I'm too attached to this stuff. Turn it off. And sometimes people text me, and because I ain't answered them in two seconds, I say, I don't, I don't owe you that. I'll give you an answer when I can. Do I have a do I have a church of y'all just y'all looking at me funny now? I know. I know, I know hey. Huh? We had to be careful because it's an addiction. Young people take homeboy phone to see what happens. Where my phone? What's, what's my, where, where the internet? What you mean, where the internet? Sit down. Okay, let me keep going. Brother, I'm... It's the truth, though. I think the Lord wants us balanced. And we've got an imbalance. No more landlines. Huh? The landlines, do you see? Yeah, this is set up. It's a set up. And the enemy is going to use it. And many Christians will fall into trouble because of their phone. So we can't, we forgot the old way. That I can get to you, sis, and I don't need my phone to get to you. The Holy Ghost has a GPS system that we're not even using. You understand what I'm saying? Huh? It's the truth. Anytime years ago when God would gather people, ah, thank you, Holy Ghost. They ain't had no phone. 
They had no, they had no way to get no message to Brother Boo Boo, but Brother Boo Boo was in place, and when the congregation gathered, they had church. But who are we listening to today? Is it really the Holy Ghost? Or are we being guided by our flesh? We're being guided by the internet. We're not being guided by Jesus. But I beg to differ and tell you today that we had better get somewhere with God for real. And God does want to speak to us. Come on here. And we have taken even the gifts way out of proportion. And what do I mean by that? God wants the gifts in operation. Yes, he does. But he also wants us in alignment with him so we can hear him and then obey him when he speaks to us. Anytime God could speak to a man that was in the United States of America and lead him all the way to Australia to a door to a couple, glory to God, because he had, amen, something that he wanted that young man to do and then speak to the other gentleman and tell him where he was, when he would arrive, and what he would do before he got to his house. I wish I had a church, but we don't know God like that. But when God can speak to us and lead us, the Bible says that the true sons of God are led by his spirit. And we have to know when God is speaking. We have to know what he is saying. I believe that when God sends you and those of you that are here, I believe he must have sent you here. Amen. He has a divine plan as to why you are here. I don't believe that we're here just to take up time. Let me say it like this. I'm not here to take up time. I'm not here, glory to God, just because I've been coming either. I'm here under divine appointment. And I don't want to be anywhere where God doesn't want me to be. It's not about familiarity. It's about God and what he wants to do. Come on here. And so this is why, sis, we have to be led by the Spirit of God and not by flesh. Flesh will kill you. Flesh will take you from your potential. Flesh will drag you where you don't want to go. Keep you longer than you want to stay. And then when you realize it, you want to get back to where God have you, then you got to really scrape and, and you got to really struggle to get back there. But how many of you know, when you get in a place with God, he'll take the struggle out. It's time out. It's time out now. God is calling for us to get somewhere with God. He's calling, Brother Murray. And this is why we're seeing, amen, the birth pains. We're seeing things happen in the earth realm. But it's because God is the one that's doing it. He's the one. Glory to God. I don't care how that bridge fell. God allowed it to happen. Don't matter. I don't want to suppose who, what, when, why, and where. It doesn't matter. The thing is, okay, God, that's the gateway. What are you saying for America? And how many of us are praying right for America? Hmm. We want things our way, but it has to be God's way. He knows that bridge had to come down. And there's going to be some more things come down. Hallelujah. We already know of the exposures, some of them. There will be more because God has to allow things to happen, to get our attention. In order to really walk in the blessing of God, we must confess and repent to God. And 2 Chronicles 7, 14 says it. If my people who are called by my name 
would humble themselves and pray. Hallelujah. I'll, I'll read it instead of quote. Hallelujah. Second Chronicles 7 and 14. Thank you, Jesus. If my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves and pray, hallelujah, and seek my face, when will we really get to a place where we will really seek his face? And not just for what we want, but for what God wants. When will we really, amen, get to the altars and cry out to God and stay on the altar until Christ is formed in us? He's the hope of glory. It's not about us building glory to God, even these ministries that we want come on here. It's about Jesus being, amen, manifested and Jesus being glorified in us. He said, and then we must turn from our wicked ways. Beloved, God is talking to the church because we have a lot of wicked ways. We have ways that God don't like. We have attitudes that God don't like. We have divisions that God don't like. Come on here. Thank you, Jesus. There's such a divide in the church that it is grieving to the heart of God. I believe if he wanted to come today, he probably wouldn't because we are so divided. It's time for unity to take place in the church to where we can really pray, God, let your will be done. Then he says that we must turn from our wicked ways. And he said, I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. This is God speaking to us. He wants us to turn and come back to him. It is time. Can you hear the cry of the Lord today? Can you hear what he is saying today? That he, his heart is broken because of the church. God is broken. What? Yes. He's broken. Our nation isn't together. Our government is not together. The people are not together. And you think God is happy? No, he's not. So we must know what it really means to walk in his word and walk in his will. Thank you, Jesus. We must confront these curses. We must command the demonic to leave. But you can't command the demonic to leave when you or I are in rebellion and disobedience to God. When we're not standing right and we're not praying right and we're not fasting right and we're not seeking God right, how can we do it? He's calling for us today. He's calling for the people of God to come back to him. Hando Shanda. I'm almost there. We must consecrate ourselves. We must set ourselves apart. We must put on sackcloth and ashes. And when you put on sackcloth, that's uncomfortable. Huh? Come on here. Yeah, years ago when they fasted and prayed for days and weeks, didn't leave the church. Why? Because the people of God wanted to hear God. We need to hear him. We got to heed him. Then we must commit our life to God. Over again. Over again. We must say yes to the Lord. We must choose to yield to God. Give over to him. 
And we can't tell God what to do with the yes when we say yes to him. Come on here. Just tell God yes. Thank you, Jesus. In doing this, we will celebrate our freedom in Christ. You see, the ultimate is that we're free in him. I think, I believe the words say, in him we move and live and have our being. Well, if I'm moving, I want to move in Jesus. I don't believe that God healed my body. I don't believe that he spoke to me all uh, a year ago and said, not time for you to go. I don't believe God said those things for me to do my own thing and go my own way. I believe that God did that because of what he yet want to do. So I had to recommit my life to Jesus. I had to really say, Brother Merle, for you I live, Jesus. <laughs> for you I die. I feel, God, I wish I had a church right now. Hey, thank you, Jesus. It's not about me. It's not about you. It's about whatever God wants to do in your life. No matter what they, they say about you, sis. See, we had to get over that too. Have to get over what people think. Oh, there she go. Ah, oh, she done got out of her seat. I don't care what you say. You don't know the story. You don't know the price I paid to carry the anointing that broke my life. But I'm going to do what Jesus tell me to do. You have to do the same thing. I know I'm radical. I'm going to stay that way. Forgive me for leaving the camera. Somebody need to know today God is calling you to a higher place in him. You got to know today, hallelujah, you're not here just to be here. You are here under divine appointment with God. And God will sit with you, and he will talk to you, and he will visit with you, and he'll get you straight. So when you leave here, you'll leave here changed by the power of God. You'll go home another way. You won't go home the same. This might be the last message, but I'm going to make it the best one. Because I never know when God will tell me, is it, Deb? This is the final, Deb. Well, I'll go out with a praise. I'll go out saying I did the best I could do for you, Jesus. Come on here, somebody. Jesus died. Hey, so that you might be saved. Jesus died. Glory to God. So that you might have a right to the tree of life. Jesus bled and died for everybody in here. Come on, somebody. But he just did not die, Callie. He rose from the dead. Thank you, Jesus. He got up on the third day. Come on here. He got up for you. He got up for me. Come on here. And just because he did that, glory to God. And now he is seated at the right hand of the Father, making intercession, letting you know, yes, you can make it, baby. Don't quit. Don't stop. Don't slow your roll. Come on here. Every day of the world, I'm determined. I'm going all the way with the Lord. I told the Lord just the other day, yes, Lord. Whatever you want. Yes, Lord. I got to get on the highway again. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I got to live in this big building by myself. Yes, Lord. Whatever you want. I can do it, God. I can go to God. I can speak God. Whatever he wants. You got to tell him yes. And don't change your mind tomorrow. When? <sighs> When the stones come, when boo-boo don't understand, and maybe talk about you, uh, don't back up. You stand your ground. Uh, you stand firm. And when you've done all, you keep standing. Huh? 
Uh, uh, don't give up. Uh, you understand what I'm saying? Uh, uh, don't quit. I know I'm supposed to teach, but uh, feel a little bit of the preach right now. Huh? I, if I have to deliver myself, Brother Merle, uh, yeah, I, I'm not going to stop, Mother D. When I look at this mama, 90 years old, glory to God, still going on. Amen. Still pressing them. My God, these two have done more than I've ever done. And I've been in ministry about 40 some years. I said, my God, I'm so far behind. These women got faith. Amen. I don't have faith like they do. God said, well, you do now if you just let it rub off on you. Come on here. Don't you know iron sharpens iron? Oh, yes. Yeah, she got some in her that I need. Glory to God. And so this is why God put people in our life to help us. I got to quit. Lord, have mercy. Hey, Brother Merle, that got me all in trouble now. Hey, yes, Lord. Somebody God is calling for. He's calling for you to come on up. He's calling for you to get in a place with him. Renounce those hidden things. Renounce even the religious folk. Yeah, yeah, re, re, re. yeah, renounce it. I don't fit the mold. And I'm not going to try. You come on out and let Jesus do it and you what he wants. Because somebody need to be free. You need to throw them chains off and be you. Be who God wants you to be and stop trying to be somebody else. It don't fit. Brother Colonel, it just don't fit. Huh? Let God make you, baby. God has his hand on your life. Right here. Both of you. But you have a hunger in you. So I got to get there. I got to get, it's almost like I got to get to the city. And I'm not going to stop. Don't stop. Do you understand? He's bringing you out. All that depression. All that heaviness that you've been in for years, years, and years. The Lord said, no more. You could have been dead a long time ago, but God said, no. He said, you shall not die, but live. You will declare the works of the Lord. You'll do what God told you to do. He put it in your belly even before you were born, in your mama's belly. Glory to God. And God said, everything that he said about you, hallelujah, he will do it. As you submit to him. Somebody give the Lord and praise today. Hallelujah. Amen. My eye mine. Those of you on YouTube, uh, I mean, uh, what are we on here? Zoom. Uh, the Lord loves every one of you. I thank God for all of you on here. I see Sister Patty's on here. And Sister Patty, the Lord has worked a miracle for you. And, and he will continue uh, uh, to do that. As you continue to run for him, uh, the Lord says, run and don't look back. And, and you've run out of bondage. You've run out of those shackles. And, 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 and God is so speeding up the time for you, Patty. I'm talking to this young lady on Zoom right now. I pray that the word of the Lord will encourage you to go on with him. Go on with him now. Stop looking back. Don't look back no more, dear. You keep your eyes on the prize and watch God do in you what only he can do in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank God for this avenue of ministry. We thank God, amen, for those that come in. Praise the Lord. And I pray that every one of you will be ministered to by the power of God, that you will let God, amen, do in you what only he can do in Jesus' mighty Wonderful name. I'm going to pray now. Can we, can we stand to, to our feet? Amen. As I pray this prayer, I thank God for the anointing. Ha. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, bless his name. Father, we thank you today. Hallelujah. We thank you for your presence now. 
We thank you for your goodness now. We thank you for your grace now. Yes, Lord. And we thank you for showing us your love. Oh, God, because you truly do love us to come and stop by and see about us. Oh, God, we thank you for it. We praise you for freedom and we praise you for liberty. We thank you for Jesus. Hallelujah. Dying for us that we may be free. And oh, God, I see you busting out these uh, bondages and chains and shackles off of the people's mind. Oh, God, we thank you for it today. We give you praise and we give you glory. We come Come out of agreement with the voices of condemnation. We come out of agreement with guilt, shame, and rejection. God, we choose to accept your unconditional love for us, oh God. We repent, God, for fear of man fear of failure and of being rejected, fear of abandonment. We repent now for unbelief and doubt. We repent for the iniquity of even our generations past that have followed this course of our lives. We ask you, God, today, oh God, to break off all these generational curses in the name of the Lord. Cut them, God, at the root, I pray, in Jesus' mighty, wonderful name. Thank you, Father. We cancel any curse that has resulted from sin, the sin of rejection, in Jesus' mighty name. Holy Spirit, we ask you to minister right now where we have judged ourselves as unworthy, of no value, and inadequate. Expose any spirit that is tapped into, oh my God, our lives in a negative way. Lord, we ask you to minister right now in Jesus' name. We command all rejection to leave now in Jesus' name. We renounce all connection to the spirit of rejection and we bind the enemy from operating in the hearts and lives of your people father god we come against all fruits of rejection that include being avoided overlooked being slighted neglected cold shoulder rebuffed denial refused disapproved of repelled ignored, shunned, invisible, spurned. We command all loneliness, manipulation, arrogance, possessiveness, criticism, perfectionism to leave in Jesus' name. We come against competition, that driven spirit, the pressure to achieve, control, the pressure to perform. We come against covetousness, pride and egotism, rejection of others, emotional immaturity, restlessness. We come against envy, self-centeredness, false gravi gra gratification, self-deception, false responsibility, selfishness. We come against a uh, fear of betrayal, self-idolatry, and we command these things to go in Jesus' mighty name, we bind all anxiety, worry, anguish, apprehensive, constant sense of guilt. Come on out of there now. All this guilt, condemnation, and shame. Leave now in Jesus' name. We come against the constant sense of being wrong. And that brings fear from stepping out. We bind that thing in Jesus' name. We come against the constant sense of unfulfilled dreams and desires. We come against despair, depression, and disappointment. Leave now in Jesus' name. We come against and bind all fear of failure, fear of others' opinions, feeling of disgrace and humiliation, feelings of loss, grief, and sorrow. And I bind that that excessive grieving now in Jesus' name. Come on out of there. All hopelessness, the inability to accept praise, inability to communicate, inability to, co to cope with task, the I can't mentality come out now in Jesus' name. Inadequacies and inappropriate assumptions come on out now. All inferiority, 
leave now in Jesus' name. We bind all insecurity, intense unhappiness. Come on out right now. Come on out of there in Jesus' name. Come on out, isolation and pain, the fear of being alone, lack of confidence. Come on out, all loneliness, low self-esteem. In Jesus' name, Jean, come up here. Thank you, Jesus. We come against negativity and pessimism, negative self-image, the belief I am worthless. We come against panic attacks, perfectionism, and performance, the refusal to communicate, and sadness. Come on out now. Come on out of there now. In the name of Yosha, Ekunda Masakata. Come on out there. Come on out right now. All sadness. Come on out. Come on out in Jesus' name, seeking to please, the need to find favor with everyone. Come on out of there now in Jesus' name. Self-accusation and self-condemnation and shame come out in Jesus' name. Father, I pray for your people now, and I thank you for freedom, hope, love, joy, and peace in the name of the Lord. I thank you, God, for that that you're doing for us today. We thank you for contentment and rest in you, dear Lord. We thank you for restoration in the mighty name of Jesus. Touch your people now. Minister, O oh God, as only you can. And Lord, we thank you and we praise you for it all. In Jesus' name.